<laughs> so a great big warm welcome to um, to Travis Fox, the architect of being. I'm not even going to attempt to describe that. And also the ACE initiative. I mean, I'm so interested in hearing everything, but not only that, I'm interested in hearing about those hats in the background. So Travis, I'm just going over to you. Who are you? And this is all about how thoughts become things and part of the movie. So yeah, if you just want to explain who you are for everybody to hear. Well, sure. First of all, thanks for letting me be on the show and uh, uh, hope everyone out there is staying safe and you know, hopefully whatever the new normal is or will return and create that here shortly. Uh, to answer your question respectively, the hats you see behind me are just some of the uh, architect brands and graduates who have graduated over the years. And over the last two months while I've been sequestered, I thought, you know, I really don't get to go outside that much. So I thought I'd bring inside to me. So I created my own little atrium here with my, my trees and my I said, well, you know, it's kind of just boring just having trees. So I just started throwing all the hats in there. And I thought, the next thing I know, everyone's like, hey, how do I get my hat in there? And so <laughs> next thing you know, I've got all these hats showing up. And I'm like, well, I guess I'll just change it every couple of weeks. And so I do some changes. So these are all different architect grads and teachers around the world and their brands and what uh, their message is. Because, you know, at, uh, at Architects of Being in our community on our online academy, our entire objective is to understand you have a unique message. You're the only one that can deliver that message. But our entire system, just like a university, is a full step-by-step -step system that teaches you how to architect for yourself and ultimately architect your lifestyle. And then more importantly, help other people start architecting theirs. So un 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 unlike, let's say, a life coach who tells you what to do, life architecting tells you how to do it. So that's what makes us really different, very neat. Plus, we're an online learning academy. Uh, I mean, tell me about one of those hats there, because we had an interesting one. You can say the same story or, or another one, but I was just like amazed sure. at one of the stories. Yeah, so like uh, Architecting Minyasa you see right here is uh, actually Rob Henreiter's uh, brand. He's a graduate and architect council member. He's a multi-year trainer, uh, has more students than probably me now. Um, but he's an ex-CEO. He uh, was the CEO of a $40 million oil company um, up in Canada and said, you know, there's got to be something more to life than this and changed his life, uh, became an architect and then became a full uh, certified yogi and now teaches architect vinyasa and so as a part of our community when you log into our back-end community system it's free it's unlimited we put a bunch of resources there for everyone from yoga to meditations to singing bowls from some great friends of mine that do events with us to some of the programs that we release and he does yoga uh, every morning so people can get up no matter where you are in the world you can jump on with us and you can experience a full yogi and architecting at the same time for free because again, if we can't leave, then you know it's the age old thing. If, the, if you can't go to the mountain, then bring the mountain to you. And so Vinyasa is one of those brands. And you say Be Life, which is Sean Hack, and then Architecting Satori, and then uh, Danny Boy over here. Um, <laughs> you gotta figure out where I'm at. Left or right. <laughs> Look at the screen. <laughs> um, my, my dyslexia is, like, is beginning very large all of a sudden. Uh, Danny Boy is a fantastic guy. Here, he's a gentleman who um, created this line, Danny Boy line. And you can buy that line and he donates 80% of his profits to uh, animals and animal shelters and a program he created as a graduate from um, the architects of being called tears and tattoos. And it's for single divorced fathers to be able to connect with their sons and still be active in their son's life and still have a connected relationship post divorce. Uh, a lot of obviously a lot of single fathers you know, who are divorced don't have that relationship and it tends to strain. So, and Danny boy, Danny himself was that way with his son and architecting changed his life. And now they have a, an intimate relationship and a very close one. And so he developed this program and this helps, um, help single fathers and animals around the world come together. Mm. Wow, it's just awesome. Yes, it's about bringing the nature inside as well. If you if you can't get well, the weather's nice now, so we can get outside. It's even nice in the UK. I mean, we're like going nineteen degrees. Get in, no, right? positively summer. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go too far. You might melt. You haven't seen the sun in a while. You got to kind of ease your way back into it. <laughs> You're telling me. It feels last week we would have been in winter woolies, and this week everybody's in shorts and t-shirts, and it's just like exactly. wow. Like I feel Big like I've landed in a different country. <laughs> Yes, exactly. So, truly. <laughs> <laughs> Although I should have been in Las Vegas actually two weeks ago. I should have been doing my whole trip across America and been in Las Vegas a couple of weeks ago. But there you go. We'll be, we'll be there again another time. So listen, how did you get involved with the movie, How Thoughts Become Things? And what was your light bulb moment through that process? You know, what was the fun bit? Well, I've been in film and television since I was a kid. Uh, I'm an Emmy Award winning producer myself. Uh, I was in the union a long time ago. I got nominated to Directors Guild about six years ago and 
said, I'm a better producer than I'm a director. And Doug and I were working on another project together uh, several months ago. And he, he said, hey, you know, we really ought to look at this project. This might be a nice thing to wrap this all up. It's an elite cast of top trainers. I know you're, I know you're good at what you do. I said, Doug, I know you're good at what you do. And, you know, it's kind of like an Oreo cookie. We said, you know, you know, why don't we just sign this thing together and make it work? And so <clears throat> we did it uh, very quickly together. And then, you know, matter of fact, I was on the phone with uh, Doug yesterday. Uh, we talk at least two to three times a week, if not texting, to keep how the project's going to go, how we can push it out. And more importantly, I think the timing of it, it, it couldn't have been any better. And it wasn't that planned that way, by the way. It was the way we originally planned it. But maybe we were tuning into the, you know, the great spirit of the universe, to God, however you want to frame that. We call that architect, your heart. But we just kind of knew that it was going to kind of come out right before summer felt it was the right time. Obviously, there, there, <laughs> COVID made it a little more interesting for all of us because we originally had a tour, not unlike yourself, where we were going around the world together. And obviously, each you know, different speakers were showing up at different events. I know I was supposed to be in the UK uh, with you guys for one of the original premieres. Obviously, that's changed, but we will be doing that later this fall, subject to the governments of the world. What we've decided to do is open it up for people. And so we created an affiliate program so that not only can you watch the film, understand from the, these great teachers, everybody from Doug himself, uh, Bob Proctor, myself, uh, John Demartini, uh, the, the great one, uh, Dennis Waitley, who I love working with. I've gotten to be in two projects with him this year uh, and many, many more than uh, Dr. Joe Vitale's in it. So you're getting all of us together with a collective of you know, three or 400 years of experience mm. uh, of what not to do and also maybe what to do and what we've learned. And I think the biggest thing that's gonna, you're going to get out of this film, uh, unlike a lot of films, it's not us coming from, hey, we have our lives all together and you people over there need to go figure out your stuff because we're experts. That's just total crap. That's not how this film approaches it. This film approaches it from, hey, look, we've all dedicated our lives in some form or another to the betterment of understanding human psychology, the human dynamic, and the human condition. And so from that perspective, this film really took a unique approach that said, well, how do thoughts become? I mean, how, how, where do they come from? I mean, I know my own personal story, which, you know, uh, I'm a doctor too. Nobody knows it. I, I used to play one on TV and nobody cared. So I'm just Travis now. And that's pretty cool. <laughs> but, you know, all of us are doctors in some form or another. And we all realize that we got great clinical training for, and we each have very specific fields we, we, we niche in. However, the one binding effect, and, you know, you've heard this a lot lately, is it's heart. You know, you got to come from your heart. You got to come from your heart. Well, I don't know about you, but I can tell you, I was one of those guys that went, well, you know what, this thing you know, really thinks it's intelligent, and I use that term very loosely, and it doesn't like me going down here very often. It doesn't like me hanging out here. It likes me staying up here in my head. And so I was one of those how-to guys, and so when Doug and I got together, you know, the architecting system and the Architects of Being community is a how-to system. It walks you through step by step, and so this film, with all of us coming together, says, hey, look, why don't we show you how it works? At least give you a good snapshot. You know, in the, the 65 minutes that we have your attention, why don't you get a real clear idea of how it works? Because I think that's the number one question I've dealt with in my 30-year career is, oh. hey, Trav, where do these thoughts come from? I have no idea. Nobody does. Okay, that's, you can say it's your subconscious. You can say it's your shadow. You can say it's, you know, deep from your recesses of your past. You could say it's the collective un unconscious, as Carl Jung used to say. All those may be true. All those may be not. Who cares how they got there? The question is, how do you deal with them once they're there? That's the big uh, uh, bridge I found the difference between someone, let's say, who's graduated architect and changed their life or someone who has said, you know, it's like going to the gym. I'm going to go and about three or four days in. I'm like, oh, this, this really hurts. I don't like this. And then they revert back to what they were. And then they're on the search again. And so this film really takes a different approach of if we continue to search outside, then we're always going to get the same results. It may be a different environment. People may come and go in your life, and that's true. But in and of itself, the themes of how you move and your relationships and your business, even your thought processing, will repeat itself. And that's because fundamentally, that's how we as human beings are built. That's how these bodies are built. It doesn't matter what part of the world you're from. It doesn't matter if you're a male or female. It doesn't matter if you're married or divorced. It doesn't matter if you're gay or straight. None of that matters. Those are just boxes, right? right. But the, the human spacesuit is built fundamentally the same. So why don't we teach people, at least at a, at a basic precursory level, and I say basic meaning we're going to take you down the rabbit hole, but we're not going to slam you all the way down there. If you want to do that, then you have to choose which one you want to go with uh, of the teachers. But we're going to give you enough information that's going to make you stop for a second and go, hmm, you know, I never thought about it from that point of view. And what if I took these, just these two steps? What if I just did that, that? What does that do for me? And then you get to really kind of get an experience of it. And so I, I think that was uh, 
really what made this film unique and what Doug and I, at least my part, when we talked about it, and both of us as, as filmmakers were going, how do we tell this story? And then how do we do it now with the world being sequestered yeah. and yet being able to unite us as a community? And we think we found that solution. So the film debuted uh, uh, last night and started going around the world and it's been released. And so far, all the reviews that have come back in have been very, well, here's the secret. Ha ha, we knew you didn't. It's here's how to do it. So I think that's really going to be the exciting part people are going to walk away with. No, I absolutely loved it. I watched it last night. So I had a sneak preview last night as well. So it was just like, uh, I sat outside with the fire pit going and the glass of wine and actually sat and watched it. I went, this is so awesome. People need to see this, you know, because whenever I'm doing coaching with my clients and it's just like, these are the things that we talk about, but we never get them out, you know, outside. And it's always about sharing and sharing. I just thought, wow. And one of the things actually, it was just right at the beginning with Bob, what he actually said was about every decision, every thought is a decision. And like just even from then, the whole thing just, you know, I was just completely caught for an hour. So if any, nobody's watched it yet, you know, you need to just literally get on and absolutely watch it. So it's, it was absolutely phenomenal. I loved it. You know what, you can even have fun with that one because, you know, all of us agreed that we, we wanted to take people down the rabbit hole, but we didn't want to take them so far that they're, you know, blah, their brains blew out and we naturally repel because it's too much too fast. It's like drinking water from a fire hose. Yeah. But just to go like one step further, yeah, Bob's right. Every thought is a decision, but then beyond that decision, there's one level deeper, which is the choice, mm. right? And so as you start to dive into your own thought process and you'll start to understand there is a difference between decisions and choices. And most of us run around like the film talks about on autopilot. We're just making decisions and we think, being the operative word, that we're actually in control of it and expecting these different results, which of course is the madness. So as the film takes you further down the rabbit hole, and then, you know, obviously you can resonate with that, whichever teacher or all teachers if you want, it's up to you. You yeah. start to dive into how each of us teaches this, this model different. You're going to end up in the same spot, right? You're always going to end up down here somewhere, but how you choose to arrive at that path is really going to be the unique choice. And you've got the top teachers in the world all have come together and said, look, you know, um, let's be honest, if we don't tell you how to do it, then we're just doing the same thing you know, we've done in the past and then we're a part of the problem. And we agreed that we weren't gonna be part of the problem, we're gonna be part of the solution. So you're gonna get more of the how in this film, hence the name, How Thoughts Become Things. Yeah, and it's not just to watch it once, is it? It's something to watch over and over and over again because you're gonna pick up something different. Every time you speak, Travis, I'll be like, oh, I didn't hear that first time, you know? So that's what I love about it. Yeah, you're, you're right. I mean, look, we, we ever, if you've ever watched the movie Star Wars, the original one, I mean, like back in 1978 you know, when the first one came out, back, that, that tells you how old I am. But if you've ever watched that, every time you watch it, right, you, you, know, you listen to Obi-Wan, you're like, oh, that's what they meant about that whole force thing. Oh, yeah. Ah, back when I watched it in the 80s, I was like, wow, there's lightsabers. And wow. I was like, that's really cool. And I went away and just thought it was a movie. <clears throat> but I start coming back and I'm like, you know, old George Lucas is up to something. He was really giving us this unconscious message of, hey, there's something bigger than us that we're connected to. The question is, do you want to connect to it? And then if you do, how do you want to connect to it? Because it's going to be an interesting concept of, you know, the dark side of the force and light side of the force. It's still the force. It's your perception and your, more importantly, how you choose to create. And so as how thought becomes thing or how thoughts become things is really taking, hey, look, you can change you any way you want to be. You're the most dynamic creature in the universe, at least that we're aware of at this time, next to the universe itself. But you're a part of that. We all are. The question is, we have this puppy up here that's so used to just running on autopilot. And from a certain point of view, thank God that it does. Because if it didn't, we wouldn't have a heartbeat. We wouldn't have a digestion system. We wouldn't have an endocrine system, parasympathetic system. Like all those wonderful systems that you know are running, but have no idea how they really work you're just going hey you know i just eat my doritos and doggone it it feels great and i have no idea how the digestion works so we have this part of us that's very connected and we have this other part that's very disconnected and they coexist in the same space no different than the light and dark side of the force and yet they're both equally valuable and now as you start to meld these two together that's when you start to recognize and i believe this is the most powerful part that comes out of this film and any one of the teachers you talk to myself included you'll come to realize you were never broken. You were never messed up. You were never not complete. You never need someone else to make you whole. Those are all belief structures that you absorbed over a period of time and said that this is how I choose to see the force of the world. And when you can take those and say, you know what? 
I'm not sure that's how I want to live my part of my life, or at least this next chapter. I want to experience this. I want to experience what it feels like to travel. I want to experience what it feels like to really be in unconditional love, starting with myself. I really want to feel what it feels like to go, maybe I, maybe I do have a valuable message and I want to change it. Right? And I want to say what I really want to say, but I haven't been able to or I'm too afraid. When you start to meld those two things together, this other world shows up. And it truly is, you know, literally like Dorothy going into, uh, into Oz is, you know, great big, you know, the wonderful Wizard of Oz. And all of a sudden you pull back this green curtain and you realize, wait a minute, the, the Oz is me. I'm the one that's been doing this all along. I just didn't realize it because I was so busy, caught up in my thoughts that I didn't realize how to really direct them. But I was the one that could direct them. And I think that's one of the things you're going to walk away at this film. I think of being in, in passions to go, you know, I've kind of done this whole sequester thing for a while. Now what? Because the new, the norm is gone. Mm-hmm. We don't, whatever normal was is history. So now more than ever, it's time to embrace the change because change now more than ever is necessary. It's not always easy. I'll agree with you there. But now more than ever, it's necessary. And if we're not willing to change ourselves, that's the first belief structure and the first thought we need to unwind because there's a part of us that is unwilling to change, which means, guess what? Change is going to run us over because it's coming whether you like it or not. Absolutely love that, Travis. I'm just like going, yeah, carry on talking. I just love this. <laughs> Listen, you were saying that um, about things that you have coming up for your clients and you're, and you're launching something this weekend. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so you can, uh, well, first of all, we've, we've uh, done for the first time in our history, we've opened up our community wide so that anyone can come in for free. You can experience uh, our jump training. And our jump training is a really kind of, let's, let's help you just jump right into your life, jump right into a relationship or jump out of one, jump into whatever you need to do, but it's going to jump into you and it's going to walk you right in. One of the things that, uh, you know, I was guilty of when I was Dr. Fox and thought I knew something when I was younger was, you know, if I could just give you that one thing, that might help you change your life stuff. Well, how about I just give it to you all? You figure out what the one thing is because I don't know what the one thing is. And that's very, it's stupid for me to go, I'm gonna give you the one thing. There's nothing for me to give you. What I do is give you an entire university system that you don't have, you don't have to be educated. I don't care if you're a high school dropout, if you're a PhD, you're gonna go through the system because it's, it's data driven. It's an online learning academy with report cards, quizzes, you can track yourself, you get your badges, you rank up, you have an entire chat system, you have all of the architect grads, you have your architect advisors, everybody's in there with you and here's the best part, it's no such thing as us and them, it's us. I'm in there every day too talking, I don't care if you're a jumper, I don't care if you're an architect master, I don't care if you're working on the keys to fear or if you're just going, hey, I wanna check it out. So we've launched this system and it's a complete ecosystem and you can jump right in you get the first three days of the jump, which is over three hours of the training for free. You get um, architecting vinyasa. You get singing bowls from one of the great masters of the world who donated all the music to us. And you can just sit with the bowls and let the bowls resonate you. You get meditations. You get immunity building. You get to talk to other people around the world who have been through the system, who are in the system. And you get to just realize, hey, guess what? You know what? You're not alone, which is the first belief structure and thought we might want to look at. And two that there's this beautiful message in you that you have most likely not allowed yourself to get out. And so architects are all about, hey, if you wanna create a life, you have to architect it. You don't build a house and go, well, I think I'm gonna do it here and I'm gonna cut there and I'm gonna do that. You know your blueprint. Well, why is not it you architect your life as well? Now, it doesn't mean everything's gonna go exactly the way you want it. Like you think it and it shows up. Hey, I'm just gonna have a Lamborghini and it fell out of the sky. We all know that's not true, right? What it is, is understanding how do I go from this head down into my subconscious? Where are my belief structures? What are my values? How do they come from? Drop down, what am I really passionate about? And then learn how to architect it back up and make this brain work for you. Truly work for you as it was designed to do. Not as it was programmed to do, but as it was designed to do. So when you start architecting your life, then you can architect your lifestyle, whatever that means to you. Because remember, and this is something I would tell all your listeners just to start with this, and this is what every person who comes in the, the architect community will embrace, and it's the first and only noble truth on the planet that I've found. I've circulated the globe three times now. I've sat with great masters. I've sat with great teachers. I've sat with, you know, you, you name the uh, religious, I've sat with them and talked to them, and I've come to one conclusion, and that is the only truth that we're all going to agree on on the planet is none of us get off this planet alive, Period. So let's start with the truth. The truth is one day this is going to end, which means we need to look backwards and going, well, how have I lived my life from that perspective? Am I living my life under the illusion that I've got time, which let's agree that where we're at now, that 
kind of probably brought to that to the forefront because COVID-19 is a lethal virus. It actually does kill people. We all know that, nothing new. But the bigger thing that's been killing people and it's been doing slowly for centuries is the fear of truly living ourselves as we want them to be. And that's the first thing an architect is going to invite you to look at. It's going to show you how to deal with that fear and the keys to fear. And that's the 21 fears that all human beings deal with and communication and trust and love, which are usually the big three. And then you get to walk through. So this weekend, we're, gonna, we're opening this up. And I'll, I'll make sure that all of your people can go to it as well. It's worldwide. It doesn't matter. And you can go there and you can get into this, the experience. There's no up. Come in. Use it. Experience it. Because then the only person that's going to stop you from changing you is you. You get to own that one. If you're ready to change, we're with you. If you're ready to architect your life, we'll walk the entire journey along with you. We're not going to do it for you. And anybody who tells you they can is just flat out lying. Can't do it for you. But what we can do is show you a system that's been built over 30 years and trained thousands of people around the world how to do it. And then ultimately decide how you want to apply that to your life, your lifestyle. And do you want to help other people by becoming a life architect yourself? If that's you, we're looking for you. If not, then come in and enjoy the stuff. Get yourself centered where you want to go and then journey on to where you want to go to one of the great teachers of the film. And I think you'll find whatever it is you decide uh, to look for. That That's sounds absolutely exciting. You, you had a little bit of um, the, the, the Zoom link literally went off a little bit there. Did you say how we could get, uh, how we could get on the jump? How could we jump in? Um, yeah, uh, I didn't, but I'll say it right now. You can go to architecting360.com. So that's architect, I-N-G. 360.com. Yep. If yep. you go there, you're, you're going to see, you're going to see a, a thing that says, Hey, um, how do I log in or how to test it? Gives a three day trial. Click the trial button. It's going to ask you simply. It's going to, yes, it's going to ask you for your name. Of course, it's going to ask for your email. But that's because we have an entire customer relations management software system. So as soon as you jump in, whether it's free or you decide to become an architect in training, it doesn't matter. You're going to get a message immediately from us that says, Hey, welcome to the community. First thing you want to do is set up a profile, get plugged in, and people are going to be there to support you, ask questions, what are you looking for, and guide you because it's a, it's a fairly large ecosystem. But two, you're going to get really clear. Step one, step two, step three, what to do. Watch this video, create this profile, do this right here. And all of it, none of the, again, no cost to anyone. This is designed for one thing. We have a, a mission statement over the next 10 years to train 1 million architects. And then we're working on what, is, what will probably be my final legacy before I leave the planet, uh, which is called Architect Circle. And we're building seven centers around the world that people can come to. They're themed, but you have to be an architect graduate to do it. Um, but you do, you get to spend seven months with us and that'll be the journey of a lifetime. And that's, that's wow. the ultimate thing. And after that, I don't know, great spirits told me maybe I'll just leave the planet or I'll, you know, wander off to the Antarctic. I don't know, but that's as far as great spirits. Let me see what I'm supposed to do. And then I'll turn the company over to the architect council and it'll continue because I believe I'm just a messenger of my time. Um, I ask people don't, follow Travis Fox because I'm just as screwed up as you are. I just know I am. And soon you'll figure out that you are too. And then you can unwind that and get rid of realize that you were perfect all along and that you're just here to enjoy the journey. Right. And so the company will survive uh, Travis Fox as it was originally designed now uh, for a while and it'll be turned over to the council. So though, for me, it's about the message, right? I mean, that is the passion. My, the drug of choice I'm addicted to is watching people wake themselves up. I have I've done a lot of drugs, had a lot of experiences with them. And I can tell you the, the best one I've ever found is when I'm in the room and I watch someone wake themselves up and they go, I'm the architect of my own life. I'm like, yeah, you have been all along. Now let the journey begin from a space of being so aware that you're the one creating the journey and being so present that that truly opens up doors you never thought starting with your mind, getting with these thoughts that continue to replay over and over and over, especially now that people have been quarantined. You know, the number one request I get is boredom, which I find fascinating. Like, I'm just really curious. So if you weren't bored, what would you be doing? And they give me all this laundry list of stuff. I'd be in the groceries and I'm taking the kids and I got to go to work. And I'm like, well, that's a bunch of doing. But you were bored before you got quarantined. You used to complain about your life before. So now all of a sudden you want to go back, which is a perfect example that we've been talking to people for the last couple of weeks of, wait a minute, when you, when you didn't have time, you wanted time. Now that you have plenty of time, you want to go back to not having time. So you can see how this flip-flop keeps going. I'm like, guys, all you're doing is exchanging one pattern for another. How about we just unwind the pattern and let's get to the truth of ourselves because if none of us get off this planet of the lie, the ultimate undoable regret is not living life itself. Let's do it. We now have the perfect time to reset the entire thing on a global scale. 
absolutely awesome absolutely love your passion love your passion so i'll make sure that i put that on the link above so i'll say to people it's up there <laughs> to, to, to jump in with travis there you go <laughs> yeah come on and jump on in you know, you know the funny thing is and you know this too and I, I all your listeners i say the same thing like come on family let's own this everything you do starts with jumping in you got to jump in the shower jump in the car jump into a meeting jump into a phone call jump into this relationship you got to jump so let's jump in starting with jump into yourself understanding how this puppy works a little bit so you can experience it because we teach on three levels we teach on clinical application and experience which means we're going to show you how it actually works which is what the film's about and then two how to immediately apply it not 30 days from now now right now and then more importantly as you apply it experience it in real time so you're getting real-time feedback from your environment and yourself and you have litmus test and way to gauge oh that's what that thought means. Oh, now I understand how to redirect it. And now all of a sudden, life becomes a completely different adventure as opposed to what we were doing before as normal. And of course, what we're gonna do now, which is who knows what normal will be. But the whole point is, you know, if we're not getting off the planet alive, isn't this a beautiful reminder that there is a universe out there that is far larger than us, far more intelligent. And guess what? If you continue to buck it, eventually it will show up in a way to remind you. In this particular case, it showed up in the form of the smallest thing on the planet, you know, next to an atom, which is a virus. Okay, but the virus of your mind, I promise you, has wiped out 10 times as many generations as COVID will ever wipe out in our entire world. The virus of our mind of fear, of regret, and shame, and worry, and doubt, and all these things we do to just to beat the bejesus out of ourselves has slayed far more lives. I'm not making light of COVID-19 in any way, in any way, shape, or form. I know three no. people that have had it they are very close to me. Uh, I get it. However, you can survive that, but you can't survive this if you continue to do the same thing over and over again. And that's what this film is about, is let's start understanding finally, how do we unwind this puppy here and really live? Because we all know deep down inside in places, not unlike the dark side of the force, we don't want to talk about, there's things, that's where our truth lives and that's where we need to go. We need to go down there and remind ourselves of those passions, those things that we want to experience. We've always said, well, I'll do that when. Yeah. There is no when. Don't, that's the illusion of your mind. So let's go do it and let's go do it now because guess what? We haven't been on flights for months. Where do you want to go first? Wouldn't that be a cool thing to do? Because I bet you the flights are, they're going to probably want you to fly. So go somewhere, experience something, snap yourself out of it and let's start living life quickly because guess what? As we've all undoubtedly learned, it can go by that fast. Yeah. And people have got the time now. This is the time now to plant those seeds, isn't it? You know, like, what's the point in doing anything now? No, this is the time to plant all those seeds. And then whenever life returns to normal, like as you say, whatever normal is, is that you're actually ready to fly and not be waiting for it. So, I mean, that's just absolutely right. wonderful. I've just yeah, and loved put it, put it, the, the thoughts and things you're thinking right now, family, they will show up in the next 30 days. So basically you're pre-framing or presupposing what your life's going to look like. So if you're already worried and doubt, and I'm not saying that you're not going to have them, you are going to have them. To say that you're not going to have negative thoughts is the biggest illusion of why most people quit. They go, oh, well, I've had a negative thought. I'm one of those people that just can't get through it. No, you're perfect. You're screwed up just like all of us because you were taught that negative thinking is bad. <laughs> negative thinking is just as valuable as positive thinking. It's what you do with it is the trick. This is the valuable part. And so we start unwinding that. We go, well, wait a minute. I've had that negative thought. I put myself down. I said I wasn't good enough because my, my sixth grade teacher said I wasn't living up to my potential. But potential is unlimited. So what the hell does that actually mean? And why do I believe that crap? Let me unwind that, change it, and show you how to do it and architect your life. And let's go. Because guess what? It goes by quickly. I'm turning 50 this year, and I still feel like I'm 12. But chronologically, I'm 50 years old. When the hell did that happen? So if it had happened to me, it's going to happen to you. So let's jump on the train of living. Because again, life without living is the ultimate undoable regret. Start with the film. Awesome, on, awesome. I listen, I'm 50, I'm 50 this year as well. Well, actually, no, I'm 51. That was last year. <laughs> ah. <laughs> it's just, but I literally go, well, listen, the first 50 years were just a practice. Now I'm going to show you how to really live in the next 50 years. So there you go. Watch this space. <laughs> well, you know, I always use my golf analogy because, you know, I've been, I've been a golfer most of my life and uh, that's how I actually got into this business, believe it or not. And as they say over, over in your land, it's, you know, got to play some proper golf, you know, whether you play over in, you know, in the UK and Scotland or Ireland, you know, the wind's doing pretty knots and you're like, okay, great. And I'm like, well, you know, I played the front line of my life, even par, maybe one under kind of there, but I'm on the back line of my life and I'm starting on number 10 and I'm swinging for every hole. I'm on every drive and every shot. I'm enjoying every minute of it because I know when I get to the 18th hole, it's time to go home. So if that's where you are in your life, 
let's go play some golf. Let's play in the back nine and let's swing for the fences because there's no do-overs. Awesome, awesome. Listen, I was brought up in a family of golfers and I come from Hollywood, County Down, Northern Ireland. So that's Rory McIlroy territory. <laughs> I know that I know that territory very well. I was over there a couple of years ago. I was over there playing uh, uh, Tralee. I played uh, um, uh, well, down in Cork. One of my favorite ones, uh, the, the old course out there on the, on the island. Holy mackerel, that was a tough, tough course. You know, Arnold's course. And, uh, you know, I, I played uh, St. Andrews. I played them all up one, one down into another. And you're right. It is proper golf for one over there in the entire islands, period. But two, the golf analogy is really cool. It's something I think we can all, all can relate to, right? Because, you know, yeah, I might just use that as well, Travis. <laughs> What's, that? What's that? I just might use that as well. That's awesome. Why not, please? I didn't, I'm sure I didn't invent it. I, I don't claim to be that one. But, you know, uh, you know, because actually, you know, if people want to know my story, when you first go to the community, the first button you're going to click is watch is start here. And it's an 11 minute video of what is architecting. And it tells you my story. My story actually came from golf. I've been playing golf since I was five years old. I turned pro when I was 19 and then went from, you know, I thought I was, my life was all planned out. And next thing you know, boom, I went from, you know, this is my life to now I'm a head case. Now I'm completely nuts. I have, I have no idea who I am. I'm emotionally messed up. Um, who am I without golf? Well, golf had defined me, but golf isn't me. Golf was just something I do. Something I just happen to be very good at, but I didn't love it. And when I really started to do my own work, I realized that I like golf and I'm good at it. And I did a lot of time on the PGA Tour. I coached some of the great ones. I've been out there with Murray, another fantastic player, uh, far more talented than I'll ever be. And I came to realize that I didn't love golf and you got to love it. I liked it, but I was playing for my father, who was the one who got me into the game. And our only way to really relate was on the golf course. Otherwise, he was still a very wounded man. Um, from the divorce with my mother that happened when I was nine years old. And so that's how architecting, and I met my mentor who changed my entire life and said, you know, let's, let's start you here. And so when you hear that whole story, kind of you go, hey, I'm not some guy who decided to become an academic and then, you know, write a book and tell you how to do it. I know I was the guy that was just as screwed up. I was just the guy that just tried to figure out how do we do this? Because everyone kept telling me, well, you just got to be mentally tough. But I am mentally tough, but I'm still thinking all these things and I'm looking down and I'm like, why am I wearing these shoes? Or why is the ball ganking over there? You know, I'm thinking these negative thoughts like, oh my God, I'm gonna double bogey the hole. But I haven't teed off yet. Where are these thoughts coming from? So I was the head case. So I became the doctor that said, I'm gonna figure out a system that you can do this. Matter of fact, uh, my, uh, my dissertation was on golf. I actually wrote a golf book that was about that whole process. And that's kind of what you know, brought some worldwide fame to me was called How to, uh, How to Beat the Bogeyman. And the bogeyman was this guy in my head. Where the I heck did this guy that. come from, right? And so that, that became my journey. And then my mentor, you know, we took him there you know, a couple, couple of degrees later. And then I realized that, you know, Dr. Fox was just another transition from Travis the golfer to Dr. Fox. It was still a personality. It still wasn't Travis just being authentically me. And yeah. so as I got to take that layer off too, which was from my, uh, my youngest child who is uh, now getting ready to go to college, um, who is autistic. And that changed everything for me. And so when I realized that, you know, here I was, the great Dr. Fox, the great communicator, I was paid thousands of dollars to speak, and I've done 14,000 hours on stage and all these other accolades. And all of a sudden, my child's born, and I have no idea how to communicate with him. None. And so it, I realized that the degrees were great for being here. But what was lacking was here, because autistics communicate emotionally, as we all do. And so he was my best teacher. He came back and, uh, when he was born and said, you know, Travis, we're going to unwind this now. We're just going to be Travis. Is that finally enough? And I invite all the listeners. I'm like, when is it, you know, and maybe you can experience that now. Where is that part of you that won't let you just be enough? Where is that part of you that says you're not worthy, that says you're not entitled, that you're not, you're not allowed to be this because? That's the place we need to go. And I call that the dark side of us. But in the darkness is beautiful. But we've been taught that darkness is bad. The darkness is evil and pitchforks. And I guess it is from a certain point of view when I'm like, in the dark is where the truth comes out. In the dark is where we realize, hey, this is the things I hide in the closet of myself. These are the wounds that I don't want to look at. These are the emotional traumas that I'm afraid to unwind. These are the judgments of myself that I hold that if someone finds out, they're going to find out that I'm a messed up person or that I'm vulnerable. But that's exactly where we need to go because you realize it's not you becoming more light, people. It's not about, oh, I need to become more light. If I hear that one more time on social media, I swear I'm going to jump off a bridge. You don't need to become more light. Light is bloody light. The sun is always the sun whether the earth is rotating around and it's night or day it's still the sun you're the same you're already light what you've done is put all these filters in front of you commonly called personality parts traumas and wounds and guilt and things and you put all things so that you have all these filters that's dimming your light well what if you were to unwind them and that's what architecting teaches you how to do unwind them and then guess what's there 
the light. It's always been there. You can't be more of it. You bloody are it. And the more you let yourself become that, the world takes on a completely different experience, no different than when you wake up in the morning and you see, oh, hey, there's the sunrise versus at night when everything is dark. We are both light and dark. The difference is you can be light and you can be dark and make that okay once you understand what it is and stop judging yourself. And that's really the passion that got me going. And it all started from golf because golf was one of those games that just <clears throat> messes up your head. <laughs> I love what you said there, actually. So I would have missed any, anything to do with golf because I would be like, no, no more golf. Um, but you said that out of the darkness comes the truth and that's, that's your true. truth. And that is just like, wow. That's a beautiful yeah. line. Absolutely beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, matter of fact, uh, we're, we have two parts that you get in architecting, and you, it comes later in your training because it's segmented training. So there's, there's, you go step by step, so you learn, right? No different than school and university, but it's fun, and it's education, and you have someone doing it with you, and it's not, it's not graded. It's understanding. Do you understand the material? That's all we're interested in. But there's a whole program that uh, I wrote called Beautiful Darkness, and matter of fact, we have a whole product line that comes out with it later this year, and the reason it's Beautiful Darkness it's the same thing. I, I grew up, you know, under a lot of different religions. And then around 17, I said, they all kind of sound the same to me. I'm not disrespecting one to the other, but at the end, it's always kind of like, well, you, if you do this and you adhere to my rules, whatever those rules are, then you get some reward. But if you don't, well, you're bad. Well, okay. So, but I tend to do that. I break rules. And I didn't even realize I broke them. So am I screwed? How does that work? I'm constantly in judgment of myself. And so part of what I realized is that darkness has been cast as this bad thing. Yet, here's the irony. How come we go on romantic dates at night? How come we tend to have sex at night? We do it in the dark. How can we watch movies in the dark? Why? Because it allows us to see things from a different point of view, but we have been shadow cast in our judgment. No different than in the film. You see, you learn to go, well, wait a minute. I've been told that the darkness is bad. And if you go there, then you're going to be judged. You're going to go to hell. It's a sin or whatever, whatever religious dogma is. I don't care. doesn't matter. But you go, wait a minute, but that's where the original trauma most likely occurred. Example, young men, we suck generally at our first kiss with a young lady. We are so nervous, we're dorks. No matter how cool you think you are, how many letterman jackets you've got, what car you drive, you're a clunky idiot and we all are. So let's just own that, right? And it is the beautiful women that go, okay, I can see past you being a dork and you're learning through this and they let us go through this. But those experiences shape how we approach the rest of our romantic life. So that first kiss, if we're clunky and it doesn't go well, and we get a, maybe a look from the girl, maybe she's, uh, maybe we're interpreting the look um, and whatever, in that moment, we shape a belief structure that says, I'm really good at this or I'm not really good at that. It, it has nothing to do with you being good enough at all. It has to do with, are you willing to connect? But our judgment of it, and we start placing ourselves, and we push that down. We do what's called suppression, oppression, and compression. We stuff it down into the, into the recesses of our body, and it starts showing up in our relationships over and over and over again. My intimacy goes down. My connection goes down. Like I'm afraid because I don't want to get judged. What if people find out, you know, I like to kiss, you know, on the cheek versus kissing on the lips? Oh, they're going to freak out. But those are all the things that we do. Yet if we dive into the darkness, as I said a moment ago, we dive into the darkness of ourselves. Darkness is not an external thing. It's an internal thing. Right? We dive in and you peel that layer off because you get to look at the belief structure. You get to look at how you did it, what the values were that you assigned it, and unwind it scientifically, understand how you did it, when you created it, and more importantly, how to create something different for real. And then all of a sudden, when you pull that filter off, guess what? More of this shows up naturally. You don't have to become more light. You don't have to become enlightened. You don't have to sit on the side of a mountain with an orange robe on and shave your head. You can if you want to, but you don't have to. That's just a choice, right? Mm -hmm. you, can, you don't have to become this or anything. You already are it. And when you get that ownership of it, then you start to recognize, well, wait a minute. I'm the one that's carrying around all this darkness and I'm judging myself for this darkness and I'm carrying around this guilt and the shame and this resentment and what if they find out and blah, blah, blah. And it's affecting every person I connect with, every person I meet. doesn't matter whether you're in a romantic relationship with or not, just any person you meet, you have that filter that you look through because that's what happened when you first kissed a girl. And this goes both ways for women and men, it doesn't really matter. Right? But I talk about guys because guys, we're just big clunky idiots. I mean, we just can't figure it out. I thought right? it was us. I thought it was us girls. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's funny because you know, 68% of my audience is women. So they're like, I always thought that was kind of fun. I'm like, all right, 
all right, I'm both male and female. Let's talk about you know, feminine energy, <laughs> yin and yang, right? Let's talk about that. Like, well, what does that mean? I'm like, it just means it's okay to be vulnerable. That's all it means. But guys, we're programmed that vulnerability is a weakness. Yet vulnerability is your strength because you acknowledge that you're scared. You acknowledge that you're nervous. You acknowledge that you don't know. And as the age old saying says, a cup that's already full can receive nothing new. So if you don't acknowledge that, then you are stuck with whatever you think you know. And if you think you know it, I got news for you. You're going to find out the universe is going to go, mm, let's try that one off for size there, smart guy. You're going to find out that you don't know a diddly do that. And when you own that, there's a beautiful thing of I become the eternal student. I become the internal observer, and the eternal experiencer, if that's not a word it is now, I get to experience my entire life from a perspective of everything's new like a child, which every major religious doctrine says the same thing. Look at the world through a child's eyes. And then you can ask yourself, when did I stop dreaming and exchange it for hoping? You know, when did I stop being and exchange it for doing? And when did I stop believing that life is meant to be experienced versus just passed through? When did I do that? And those are three very, very powerful questions that I believe everybody in this time really could ask themselves. And if they had the courage, and believe me, it takes a lot of courage to move from, from that space into compassion. And the first compassion you get to feel from yourself, and compassion doesn't mean you feel sorry for somebody, it doesn't mean you say, whoa, it was me and sing Kumbaya on the mountain, I guess you could, it means compassion of understanding, wow what you felt at that moment and how you have carried that with you. And when you start diving into the beautiful darkness and you architect your life, you go, wait a minute. It doesn't have to be like that. It doesn't have to be like anything except for what it feels right to me. And I understand why I'm feeling that way, what I want to feel and how to architect it. And then most importantly, how to architect it as a lifestyle. Because again, life without living is the ultimate undoable regret. There's no way around it. I know that journey about, you know, knowing, thinking that you know everything and then you really find out that you know absolutely nothing. And yes, it's, um, it's a very humbling experience. And then, <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Especially when you still think you know something when you don't know anything and you're arguing all the way down. No, no, no I know that step too. No, I've heard this before, Travis. Oh, okay. Well then how come you keep doing the same things over and over again? Ah, you know, it's because, you know, some things you just can't change. Okay. That's a belief structure too. All right. And on that way down, we trip, fall, bump our head. And one of my favorite ones is, you know, we keep beating our head against the wall and expecting to become a door. <laughs> Simple. Okay. Listen, that, we could, I could just sit and listen to you all day. You know, it's just like, I'm, I'm ready to say more stuff. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness, you know, like if, uh, we've been here for half an hour already or 40 Let's minutes. Go. Why not? I'm enjoying my conversation with it. If they want to listen to us conversate, great. If they don't go tune into whatever. <laughs> no, it's okay. been absolutely, absolutely awesome. And I can't wait to meet you in person. So I think it's going to be absolutely brilliant. So I'm going to literally, I'll just stop the recording here for everybody. So, and then we'll, we can have a quick chat after, but thank you so much, Travis. So everybody, everybody, please look at the links up there and jump in with Travis and um, watch the movie as well. So I'll see you all soon.